This is the Excel sheet for compartmental modelling of greenhouse gas emissions from soil. It's going to run through how to fill it in. What we're doing is implementing the storage equations that you've already derived. Just have a quick look at those. These are the storage equations that you've derived for each compartment, for compartment 1 and compartment 2. Uh, for compartment 1, the amount of carbon at time t plus 1, or sometime in the future, equals the amount of carbon at time t, that's what you started with, plus the flux of carbon in, minus the two fluxes of carbon out, multiplied by the time step. These are rates, these carbon fluxes are rates. If you multiply the rate by a time, then you end up with an amount. You add that amount to the amount you started with, and that gives you the amount sometime in the future. And the same thing with compartment 2. The amount of carbon in compartment 2 at some time t plus 1, some time in the future, equals the amount of carbon that was present at time t, that time now, plus the flux into and the flux out of the compartment. Those fluxes all multiplied by the time step because the fluxes are rates. If you multiply the rate by a time, you end up with a mass. Uh, which you add to the starting mass to give you the mass sometime in the future. So these are the two storage equations then that you're now just going to put into Excel. Compartmental systems been drawn up in the left hand corner and the values for the, the fluxes have been put there in blue and the values for the transfer coefficients there in green. You can see also that the transfer coefficients and the fluxes have been named so when they're used in the formulas, they'll appear as their names rather than a cell reference, which can make it easier to understand the formulas. So you've got the compartments themselves, you've got the fluxes, which are in blue, and the transfer coefficients in green. And in red, we've got the starting concentrations. So starting back in 1913, 65% carbon in the upper soil layer and 7% in the lower. So as we move along the time step of, of one year, these transfer coefficients and fluxes are worked out on the basis of their um, the fluxes are rates per year. So the, the time step we've got is per year. So we can type the formula in then. Um, we could refer back to our Word document, but I think we can probably remember. The amount of carbon sometime in the future equals the amount of carbon to start with, which would be 21, um, plus the flux in into compartment 1. There's only one flux going to compartment 1, so we can click on that. Minus the flux is out the flux is out, there's two fluxes out, so put them in a bracket, and the flux out is the concentration in the compartment multiplied by the transfer coefficient. So the concentration in the compartment is what's in this cell here, so we can click on that again, B21 multiplied by the transfer coefficient, first of these fluxes that's the transfer coefficient. Put a bracket around that. And then the next flux, underneath its own bracket, we've got the concentration in the compartment multiplied by the transfer coefficient, which is this second transfer out of the compartment. Put a bracket around that. And just to be sure, we can put brackets around both of those two fluxes out. So we've got the starting amount of carbon plus the flux in minus these two fluxes out and the fluxes out are calculated from the concentration multiplied by the transfer coefficient. And then for compartment 2 we can do the same thing and so that equals the first term is the amount of carbon that was to start with in compartment 2, which is this. In this case, 
there are two fluxes then. So we have this one, but there's also the flux coming from compartment one, which is characterized by the concentration in compartment one multiplied by the transfer coefficient. So the concentration in compartment one is that multiplied by the transfer coefficient, just that. Those two terms then, this flux and this flux are the fluxes in, and then minus the flux out, and there's only one flux out, and the flux out is proportional to the concentration, which again is this. It's equal to the concentration times the transfer coefficient. Okay, and then we can just copy those down. And the graph plots itself. Whilst we're on the spreadsheet, the other thing that we need to do is to carry out a verification procedure. A verification procedure means changing the time step. We know that the numerical method that we've used is an approximation. We know for it not to be an approximation there needs to be an infinite number of time steps, but that's not possible. But we do know that if we make the time step smaller we get closer to the real answer. Therefore if we take the time step smaller than we've used already and then consider the answer we get and compare the answer with the smallest time step to the time step that we used, if there's not what we regard as a significant difference between the two then we can accept our answer. So we're going to run this then with a, a time step of half a year and then compare the answer after 150 years with a time step of half a year to the answer with 150 years with a time step of one year and we'll see whether those answers are sufficiently similar that we c we're happy to accept the answer with a one year time step. So we need to copy these and we should just check that we're still referring to all the right cells. We should be because the named cells are effectively absolute references. So when we copy, um, the absolute references remain to these input parameters up here. We need to refer to the time step, which we haven't done in this case. Um, in the first instance, when we've got a one-year time step, we didn't explicitly make reference to it because what we would have done is to multiply all of these rates of input and output by the time step but as the time step was one year then it doesn't change the result but here we need to explicitly make reference to the time step because it's not one year it's half a year so we need to multiply our input inputs to the cells and outputs to the cells by 0 0.5. Copy that across that. So the number's not exactly the same after the first time step because the first time step is only six months rather than a year. Let me copy those down and if we go to the end of the column we see we've got 33. 79 and 32.95. Well, can copy those Go back up here. Put those in for the moment and compare 33.68 to 33.79, 32.33 to 32.9. Um, there's less than 1% difference between the one year and the half year time step and
given the error on the input data, then the difference between the one year and the half year time step is not significant. So there's no value to us in uh, carrying out more calculations than those required for a one year time step. But that's the process that you need to go through in order to verify your numerical solution and that's the sort of statement that you need to make.